First Aid Kit Palomina album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from a Swedish indie folk band. Uh, they are the Soderberg Sisters. They've been at it for a few years now. And I've got to be honest, in their early days, I kind of thought they were just going to be another indie folk act. Like their debut album, The Big, The Black, and The Blue, certainly had its moments. Tracks like Hard Believer and Song for Richard, I thought were very passionate, very well performed formed indie folk tunes, but the consistency was not there, and there were just moments that had no personality whatsoever. But for me, with their follow-up album, The Lion's Roar, not only did they, you know, really improve on just about every front, First Aid Kit became just this sort of cult favorite act of mine. This was an impeccably heartfelt and incredibly well-performed indie folk record that had just had a huge atmosphere, big hooks, nods to old-school singer-songwriters, and if you haven't heard King of the World featuring Connor Oberst, do yourself a favor and go check it out. As a matter of fact, a lot of the same things thoughts uh, showed up on their next album, 2014 Stay Gold. Honestly, I thought it was really good too. Now, it was their last album, Ruins, that kind of let me down at the end of the day. I heard tracks like Fireworks and Rebel Heart, and I was ready to sign up. Sign me up for the album. I'm ready for it. It got me pumped. But... God, the, the album overall was not the same for me, and it was some of the least consistent work I'd heard from First Aid Kit in quite some time. And I should point out, the singles leading up to this album were very hit and miss, and I had a lot of very strong feelings on them. On one hand, I did like the pageantry and the over-the-top nature and just how vast some of it came off, but at the same time, I did miss the simplicity and the stripped-down nature of their early work. That being said, let's chat about this thing. This album starts off with Out of My Head, and to be honest, I think it's the best track here right off the bat. This is a very warm, emotional, alternative country track, uh, kind of almost coming off like what Angel Olsen was doing on Big Time. It's bold, it's cinematic, it's heartfelt, it's a big time throwback and just a great folk single overall. But it's also got this intensity to it, it's just so big and full of life, it just makes me so happy. This is where I love hearing first Aid Kid. Angel is really great too. This one is a lot more whimsical and mystic sounding and in true to first Aid Kid fashion, honestly, the lyrics are commendably raw, very emotional, very human too. It's a very human sound, but they make it work just because of how accessible it is, how catchy and big this hook is. The beautiful atmosphere as well, it's pretty easy to swallow. It's a great track and I love the horns that pop in towards the end as well, they are always welcome. Then we have Ready to Run, which is just this big, airy, beautiful tune that is just so, once again, full of love. And just makes me want to get out on the road and see what there is to see, baby! It's heartfelt, it's light on the ears, and if you're a fan of harmonies or you're new to the world of first aid kit, just take this all in. Because they are divine, this track just makes me smile and warms my heart all around. But my main takeaway from this album is just how much I miss the simplicity of their early work. Turning on to you is where things get a little sloppy for me. It's a little too stripped down, a little bit too alternative country for my liking. And it's passionate and sweet for sure, that's not the issue. It's also just really flimsy sounding. This track sounds like it would blow away if a slight breeze picked up. It also leads to some of the cheesiest lines on this album, they're just better than this. On the other hand, when it comes to fallen snow, I have completely different issues. This is some of the most faceless material I've ever heard from the duo. This could have been any indie folk band. They don't play to their strengths at all here. The vocals, the harmonies, it's all phoned in here. It's depressing. And this ho-hum, nothing fancy instrumental is just so bland. I hear this track and I'm begging the sisters to go back to basics. And Jesus Christ, wild horses too. Why? I, I think this is the biggest sin committed here. Uh, I think this track is criminally boring. This is some serious paint-by-numbers folk, for sure. And and then they want to go in ahead and have the guts to call this track Wild Horses 2. You're invoking the great name of one of the greatest Rolling Stones songs of all time. And for this... Ugh, the lows of this album are so low that they're sucking the life out of me. Nobody knows it's so slow. It is 
so slow. Like, it is driving me insane. And it's not like they can't do a rustic, sweet, sort of stripped-down tune. There's plenty of those on this album. But it certainly isn't this. This is in one ear, out the other. Thanks for coming. And 29 Palms Highway. I was so, you know, dead set on enjoying this track because this is easily the most alternative country-leaning tune here, and I usually like that kind of shtick. I even like that from First Aid Kit, but this is just too much. This track is so middle of the road, like you hear the choir vocals and the sincerity in these lyrics, and I'm actually like in awe of how beautiful it is. But then we get these awkward synths and just some lackluster performances. It's a little much, and I think they missed the boat here. Yeah, this is my least favorite First Aid Kit album in a really, really long time, and it's a shame because... The album's highs, they soar. The last one is fantastic. I love the warm and wintry vibes on this track. There's just such a rustic nature here, and it's done so tastefully. Not only that, but it reminds me of the sort of 70s radio rock that I would have grown up with, and it makes me happy. All that while remaining as impeccably beautiful and well-written as some of their best stuff. And, like, I hear a feeling that never came, and then I looked at some of the, like, the softer, more stripped-down tunes on here, and I'm like, here it is. Here's how this can work, and it's so good. This is a tender, emotional, painfully real track, and one of the best tracks here. But it also opens up into one of the sunniest, sweetest, most feel-good tracks that's just so easy on the ears. This is the simplicity that I craved. This sounds to me like they recorded this in one take, and I mean that in the best way possible. It's just by the books, but done so well. It is so classy, as is this album's title track, Palomino. The twinkling guitar here, the pounding drums, this makes me want to take a road trip. It's beautiful, it's heartfelt, and the track that this album deserves as a finale, it's fantastic. I just, I kind of wish that the sisters, you know, were a little bit more consistent this time around, because the positives to this album are soaring they are you know life affirming beautiful folk music with incredible harmonies impeccable lyrics great personalities everything that i crave in modern indie folk the only issue is with this more glossy more epic and vast sound it's a slippery slope and let me tell you the lows are so low that they're bringing me down quite a bit and that's a real shame because i really want to love this album but for now i'm feeling a decent six on this album but let me know what you all think down below if you like the video be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.